Hello, everyone. So good to be here. I'm Rafik, a media artist and director of our studio. And I'm Christian Burke, the head of engineering at RAS. We are a team of 20 people, can speak 15 languages and 10 countries, and working in Los Angeles, California. Last nine years, we have been practicing with media arts in different scales. We have been working specifically embedding media arts into architecture last nine years. Now, I think I coined the term data painting 2008 and start programming VVV, a software that can allow you to like, create computer graphics with any kind of iOS. But last nine years as a studio, we practice a little bit much advance and try to create art for anyone, any age, any background. The context is try to make public, uh, public data for public art and try to create installations in places like not necessarily designed for, such as airports, hospitals, schools, of course, museums and galleries. But our hope is like to make something much purposeful and impactful and go beyond what a canvas can be. And we, mes we mostly use light as a material and data as a pigment and have been practicing computer graphics very deeply. And from game engines to like, you know, complex real-time APIs where data can transform into something else. And I do believe data is not just numbers. Data can also become a form of memory and this memory can take any shape and form. Obsessed with fluid dynamics, clearly, and the idea is, I think, data pigmentation. The idea that if one day data becomes a pigment, it doesn't need to dry, and I hope it just flows like life. So we love real-time graphics, we love, of course, computation, love, like nerding with machines for many years as a team, and we have so much diversity when it comes to like installations, as you may see. But today, we are very appreciative like the PyTorch community because we have been working the idea of if a machine can learn, can it dream and hallucinate? So this turned into an exciting research. So last, I guess now, seven years since the archive dreaming, which was, I think, the very first installation running a real-time TSNE algorithm on a four-channel um, GPU and real time you can interact with like a 1.7 million documents of lower dimension reductions. As far as I know, it was one of the first example of using real time um, computer graphics and a real time application of what happens if there's no search bar, what happens if we start learning through, not necessarily by search bar, but something that with the totality of everything. And that's exactly where the very first R GAN model train on this. 1.7 million documents, and on the right side, this idea of machine hallucination became a body of work. So last seven years, we have been developing these artworks. And so at the heart of all of our artworks is actually AI. And since our, start, since our studio started doing AI research in 2016, we've trained over, over 200 uh, GAN models with over 4 billion images. And at the heart of everything we do here is really data exploration. When we go, when we research a project, we focus on a particular area or a particular city, you know, some sort of study, and really try to learn what this data is, what it looks like, you know, and how it feels, and what people think about it. And so, of course, at the heart of all of this as well is the PyTorch engine, just driving everything we do from start to finish. And I think this was a very powerful transformation that our studio became also as a humble studio that working with billions of sometimes data points. The transformation allowed us to use lots of lower dimension reductions and try to visualize six or seven dimensional data universes and trying to find meaning in those like giant uh, data sets. But of course, imagination is much beyond what we can plot. So we thought that there's much more to explore when we can use machine intelligence in the practice. There's a one field that we really love is embedding AI into architecture. I do believe that the near future of the buildings is just much inspiring than just a concrete steel and glass. I do believe that the buildings will remember and dream. And to really speculate this, we truly start by looking at the archives of the buildings. For example, these are information from 100 movie scenes that played in this history movie theater. So we are trying to find the connection between what the space created as a memory and how we can connect them. Another example, Walt Disney Concert in Los Angeles, the cultural beacon of LA, I guess the Eiffel Tower of LA. We took the 100 years of every single institutional data point, 77 terabytes of just sound files, and we were able to cluster information and also use the building as a data set and transform the facade of the building and plot it back to the building as a story. As far as I know, it was one of the first examples five years ago using the large data sets from the archive, institution archive, and use 42 channel projectors, each 4K, like imagine the resolution and <laughs> renderings, and we project back to the building its own memories. So as far as I, I understand from this experience, the, the institution was also excited to go beyond just fireworks and somehow leave back the next 100 years a letter that talks about their institutional memory and bring AI as a collaborator in the age of performing arts. 
So this piece was one of our highlights, and of course, the other one, very important, and again, five years ago. This was Machine Hallucinations New York City. This was actually the first project I ever worked on with the studio in 2018. And the really important thing here is that we try to dive into the collective memory of a work. When we go and we collect data from a particular location, you know, the things that are available online or in a particular data set are very representative of what somebody thinks. And so, you know, we try to piece this together and create a GAN model, which is really a representation of the collective memory. And so we try to embed this forever in media art. And 130 million images for us was really benchmark, like looking at the network from every single social media and reconstruct those materials through new, new 18 channel 4K uh, presentation, including sound as well. And the other project that we are really excited about this happened last year, um, which I think another cultural hero, Anthony Gaudi, and a very well known architect of um, in Barcelona. We were very fortunate to look at his entire body of work, collect more than a billion data points, every single Gaudi's ever written, um, I guess, work. And this was an audiovisual performance. You can open the sound, maybe, just here a couple of minutes. So what we are watching here is a real-time So what we are seeing here is truly transforming a cultural beacon in a public space by using the legacy of the uh, Gaudi itself. And the building is a UNESCO heritage, meaning it has to be 3D scanned with one millimeter accuracy, which gives us 1.2, 1.3 billion data point, and we just, which means like a millimeter accuracy on the facade. And we give it back to the building to honor his life, but we still remember who he is, what he left behind, and how the humanity respect respectfully gave back to him. But to us, what was powerful, not only just creating an AI installation in a public space, but bringing 65,000 people together. As far as we learned, this was the largest audience ever came together to watch an AI artwork, at least in Europe. And our other artwork, I guess you may see, is right now in Vegas. This, this cool artwork is <laughs> the largest AI data sculpture in the world. Um, running on an eco rectangular canvas of this fair, a really architectural and, I guess, engineering marvel. So what we are seeing here is a real-time weather data transformation of the winds of Las Vegas, ISS data transforming into mission hallucination, and finally Hubble telescope. So we look at these three different data sets and transforming the canvas into a data sculpture. Oh, also working with NASA GPL last five years, so I'm very happy to say that wonderful engineers and incredible minds uh, and open source data as well, like the PyTorch community. I guess lastly, important topic right now, there's a one wonderful news to share. As of last week, our work called Unsupervised officially in the MoMA permanent collection. As far as we know, this is the very first generative AI collected by a significant institution. The project started like a two years ago by the metadata of the MoMA. Yeah, I mean, working in, working in AI and web and web3, I mean, this is a really inspiring piece because it's such a historic moment for AI and digital art and web3 all at once because it really speaks to the mass adoption of both digital art and, you know, digital collectibles all at once. And this was a really important piece to us and so many cool innovations that we brought to this here. I mean, during the piece itself, you know, we're actually recording data from inside the space. So maybe you can see right here. Right on the ceiling, we actually have a microphone and a motion tracker. So we're using some real-time data from the physical space itself and feeding it in to influence the noise in the GAN model. Um, and you know, of course, one of the really important things to us too is just sharing how we're using data, how it's influencing the artwork real-time. So alongside the artwork, we actually have a secondary screen that's showing a in-depth view of the UMAP cluster. So this is a clustering of the images that we used from the MoMA and from other places to really like create this model. And we're showing the noise parameters, we're showing the weather data being pulled in, we're showing some of the motion tracking data, and really deep diving into these clusters and what's influencing and driving the artwork that we make. And I think what is really inspiring is on the left side, every single day, creating a new latent walk based on the reality of life in the museum. On the right side, as we remember, data pigmentation happens. And once we like connect these two universes, we have some profoundly inspiring experiences. And what is really exciting also, like how the 238,000 artwork of MoMA, one of the most profoundly 
pioneers of painting, sculpture, games. I mean, in this archive, there's Pac-Man, there's Tetris, <laughs> there's Mario. So like, don't just underestimate MoMA as just a, <laughs> like in the museum. They are the pioneers of art collecting. Every single information in this metadata was already on also GitHub, and they were, but nobody used it for some reason. Um, but data was there. And at the end, we create these three artworks, back-to-back -back playing, constant, constantly changing, ever-changing. And most importantly, we learned that average visitor viewing experience, experience increased to 44 minutes per person. And that number, given the like context of museum goers, it created a big impact in the museum history. And we learned that it was the largest uh, audience ever get, get together through an AI and an art. So we are very happy to say that now generative AI, we hope, is in the history. And hopefully, more people can bring more vision to this field. And lastly, I think this is the part that we want to share from this community's wonderful perspective. So we do believe that nature is the most advanced technology we have. And for this purpose, we have been collecting many information about nature, such as our flora research, like started about four years ago, 75 million flowers. We not only just look at the image or the video or the audio, we also speculate what happens if we can smell this generative AI. And we are working with Fermanich, the company behind many major perfumes, and we work with their AI called Charlie, trained on half million sand molecules. We were even able to create a real time, not a diffuser, real time generative sound, audio, audio, video, and scent. So in this installation, when you open the door, you have a chance to smell generative AI. I know it sounds weird, but it's truly what it is. Uh, f 14 notes, just to be precise. 14 notes, you can count, like, yeah. And then lastly, we had another research, maybe. Corals. Yes, this is when we really started getting into diffusion. This was at World Economic Forum last year. We presented this artwork, and you know, we started using diffusion models we were very early in the scene. You know, it's not something we'd worked with previously, and you know, really just using diffusion models and AI as a medium to preserve nature, just to raise awareness about you know how beautiful corals are, how they're dying in the world, and how important it is that we use AI to raise awareness for problems in the world. And I'm happy to say that truly, on, um, the ocean preservation team at UN and the World Economic Forum transforming these two-dimensional two high-quality images back to three-dimensional worlds, putting underwater. In Miami, Ram Cola's teams is exactly 3D printed and also make a concrete mold, and they are researching which one creates ecosystem again. If there's a one small chance to reconstruct ecologies, there's a chance to make it with AI. And most importantly, even the world's most political space can be more focused when the idea is clean, have a clarity, and AI has an impact. So after all these nine years of exciting journey, we found that art really connects and unites. Not only just product and service, but the experience in life transforms life and touch a mind and soul. But we took this very serious and not necessarily just stop there. And right now, we want to announce here in this beautiful event our next attempt, our next hopefully gift to humanity. We call it not LLM, but we call it Large Nature Model. We believe that we are forgetting nature every single model we see. We want to profoundly research something that is dear to our heart and hopefully for humanity. At the moment, we are very closely working on a three important topics, flora, fauna, fungi, in collaboration with one of the major institutions and with the help of like 16 physical locations that we are physically flying with a camera, with a drone, nerves, or Gaussian platters, or second order ambient like sonics and like weather data, sand, you just imagine. And it's not just like a, a comfort zone and putting just ready models. We are trying to find physically go and and connect with people that we love and respect. When we think about data, we forget where it comes from. And that's why we want to go and work with the people who are living in the data, such as Chief Nishiwaka and Putani. They are amazing people inspired James Cameron's avatar. They are the reason that the tree there, the prayers are there, and many others. Thanks to them, they host us in their dear village in Amazonia, Accra, in Brazil. It takes 13 hours. There is no private jet, there is no helicopter. We have to just travel. But what is amazing is they open their houses and allowing us to become advisor for the AI model, and hopefully many more. And what does this mean is we connect with the young minds. They are only 1,000 people, but they live 120 years. And they have this, they did nothing but just life in general. We inspired and we asked them, what is your dreams? And their dreams were very humble. They want a museum, a school, and a village. And as of last month, we kindly asked young Yamanawa artists and paint beautiful works. And we use only 13 paintings and use generative AI and fine tune a model and make a 1,000 unique artwork. 
and sold them as on the blockchain. And we raised $3.2 million right in their Web3 accounts. No bank, no institution, no government. And we empowered them. It's been beautiful to work on this project, and you know, really what we aim to do every day is wake up and make a difference in the world. And so when we start connecting the art with the mission, we really end up creating something beautiful, something that can touch the soul, something that can touch the heart, something that can make a positive impact in the world. And this is how we're using AI and connecting AI with art to really go out and make a difference. And we really hope that as open source community, this AI model can make an impact, purpose, and hopefully be valuable for humanity. And we really hope to collaborate with many of you. Also, Suraj, we have hopefully here, like we already started like, communicating about preserving language and beyond. So, but just want to finish this exciting moment with this beautiful world from a wise man from the forest. He said, it's new times we are living now. Time for forgiveness, time for love, time for spirituality. It's time for humanity to look back to the origins to the earth, to our hearts, to learn, to love, and respect one another, to make alliances, join forces. This is the moment. Thank you very much, and hope to see you in our museum in Thailand.